All right, welcome back. Uh, this, for the moment, for the time being, is the last video in my series on promises <laughs> in ES6 and async and await in ES8. Now, many people who are watching the, the live version of this, you might be watching the recorded version, are making lots of excellent comments about things that I'm not demonstrating. For example, what if I want things to happen like on the interim during various stages of this? Or oh, I want to show like a loading bar. Uh, you know, I want my asynchronous calls to be happening in parallel instead of like waiting for all of this to be done and then just showing the results. Those are all really good questions. So I'm trying to stay in sort of a simple place to demonstrate the basic idea, but I would leave some of those as exercises to you and maybe I can come back and continue this series if there are some key things that I've missed. So please give me your feedback in the comments. But what I want to show in this particular video is what if I want to make multiple calls to word gif and I want them I want to be able to retain sort of something about the sequence of those calls. So for example, something I absolutely could do is I could just do this twice, right? And in fact, I can still leave the catch at the end. So I can actually do this. Um, I think, right, because this returns, oh no, I would have to say, right, this is a little bit goofy, but I could say return word gif, oops, sorry, word gif inside of here, and then I could say then uh, do another one, right? So this is just me doing two. This is a little bit weird, and I need to finish off the code here, and I need a dot here. So this is the way of chain, this is kind of without the await thing, this is the way of chaining promises. So first I call word gif, I show the results, I return the next call to word gif, which is a new promise, and then I show those results. So let's run this and see if we get two, oops, sorry, I'm in a different place. We see two, and they happen one after the other. And sometimes I'm gonna get an error if there's no gif. Okay, now here's the thing. I wanna change something about the word gif function. I wanna make this have an argument num, and that's going to be the number of, um, the number of, sorry, the, I, I'm, I'm spacing, the number of letters that I want. So I'm gonna go to the wordnik API, and um, hmm, I'm gonna take this out, and I'm gonna say, when I'm calling that, I'm gonna say plus, um, and I, so I'm just adding, and um, there's a nice way, I should use those, what's that called in ES6, the string thing? I'll have to make a video on that, but I'm gonna do it my highly manual way. I'm just adding in the minimum and maximum length as a number. So hopefully you can follow what I'm doing here, because I'm, all right, so what I'm doing is I'm just modifying the call to the WordNick API to specify a number of characters. So I'm gonna say WordNick4 and then WordNick5. Word, sorry, not WordNick, WordGIF4, WordGIF5. So I should get a four letter word and then a five letter word. Four letters, um, all right, I got an error. Four letters, five letters, okay? So that this works, four letters, five letters in sequence. So, so why am I doing this? So one thing I wanna point out about sequence versus parallel. I know I'm gonna get to promise.all. Interestingly enough, what if I didn't chain these? So let's take out the second one and just leave this first one. And now I'm gonna actually just completely duplicate this code and say, I'm gonna say three and four, three and four. Let's run this now. So now they're not chained, so I'm not waiting to do the second one till the first one comes back. I'm just saying do these in parallel. Do both of them, and when they both come back, um, create the paragraphs in the image. So let's look at this. Three, four. Three, four. Three, three, four. So interestingly enough, let me, let's, I'm sort of surprised. I, I, I'm going to just try now with a five as well. Ah, look at this. Four, three, five. So when they're happening in parallel, what I'm saying just like, do this, do this, do this, just start them all, I'm not necessarily gonna be sure about the order that they come back in. So one way to deal with that is to chain them like I did. There's another way to deal with that if I wanna say like, wait till everything is done and then show the results, and that's where promise.all comes in. So promise.all requires an array. So let me, let's just, so let's just, pretend I have something like called promises 
And it has, it's an array of three promises. If there is an array of three promises, I can write promise dot all, pass in promises, that array, and then add, um, sorry, the then uh, and the catch. So hold on, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is hard. I have to think about this while I'm doing it. Promise dot all promises, then, and this gets a function of what to do when it comes back, and this gets a function, which is pretty much, you know, if there is uh, an error. Okay, so I think this is the skeleton of what I want. I have some syntax errors here, maybe a you know, semicolon. Um, looking, looking, looking. Oh, well, this should say error. Console log error. What's wrong here? What am I missing? Ah, this needs a, there we go. No. Um, okay, this is actually correct. This curly bracket, I don't know why I was, I had a little brain malfunction there where I thought it was supposed to be there, but this is actually closing setup, so this is in the correct spot. So this is the skeleton. The idea is, um, and by the way, I, this, this is really a problem. This needs to have an argument. The idea, the skeleton is, if I create an array of three promises, I can say, when all of the promises are complete and resolved, give me the result of all those promises in an array of the same order as the original promises. That's the idea of promise.all. So what are these promises? Well, they could be this. Word, gif, three. Word, gif, and certainly I could create them in a loop or with separate variables, but just to do this word, gif, five. So this is the idea here. Let me give myself a little bit more space. That what I can do here is just say, hey, I want to make three promises. I want three word gif things. When all of those are done, show me the results. And now this is, um, uh, I'm just going to use a, uh, like a regular loop because instead of a for of loop, I'm not sure why, but that's how I feel right now. So now I can do a loop to go through all of the results. And then I could say um, data equal results, index i, and then what do I wanna do? Actually, let's just put this in here. The difference is I'm saying results index i, results index i, right? So the idea here is now, this is exactly what I had before. Sorry, it took me a little while to get to this. This is exactly what I had before. The difference is I am putting all the promises in an array. I'm not handling them with their each, their own then or in separate blocks. I'm just putting all the promises, right? Word gif returns a promise. Remember this code? Oh, this, uh, this I can totally delete now. Remember this async function we wrote? The async function with awaits returns a promise. When the promise is resolved, you get this particular object. So now when all of the promises are resolved, then I have all of the resolutions in an array called results and I can go through them one at a time. And they should be in the same exact order as the array, original array. <sighs> Did I do this correctly? Did I do this correctly? Ah, oh, shoot. Sketch.js line 49. <laughs> What did I do? Wine 49? Am I even in the right? Yeah, I'm in the right 49. Oh, hold on. I must not have, I didn't save. I didn't save. <laughs> save. Try this again. This is like wasted time in the video, but. <laughs> well, line 20 now. Should never use that drum sound effect. Oh, I just have an extra curly racket. Thank you. There we go. So when they're done, all three of them happen at once. And they're always in the right order. Three, four, five. Three, four, five. Let's get an error. I'm sure we'll get errors if uh, we give um, longer words. So let's just see what happens with an error. Oh, didn't get an. <laughs> How are we not getting any errors? All right, so I got an error. So here's the thing. This promise.all might not actually be such a great solution for this because promise.all is all or nothing. So if any of those promises have an error, then I don't get any of the results. So if what I wanted to do here was create a for loop, 
you know, let i equal zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus. Uh, and I have like, let promises equal an array. And then say promises dot push word gif, you know, for, for i. <laughs> right, this is now going to work and it should show me a hundred word gifs, but if any one of those words come, does not have a proper gif associated with it, I'm not gonna get anything. So let's see, it's doing them all. What, this is actually a great exercise now for you to do a loading bar, because this takes a while. And actually, I got lucky, I guess. Like all 100 of them worked. But if I want to see them like appearing as they come in, I want to do them more in parallel, I want to sequence them. But hopefully you've seen the range of ideas here. So I'd encourage you to take this code, play with it, maybe back out of the promise.all thing. What can you add a loading bar? How can you like load them cleverly? Um, and try some other stuff with it. Um, and I also, I think I'm forgetting, I, I guess I'll do this in another video if I can remember. I also can use try and catch inside of this async function if I want to handle the errors in a slightly more custom way. <laughs> I think that's correct. But if that's not correct, eventually I'll make a video about try and catch. Thanks for watching this series on uh, promises. I think I now have made a video tutorial that follows this list. Um, leave me your comments and your questions and all that sort of stuff, and I'll see you again sometime. Goodbye. <laughs>